Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about how to assign variables in Python. Now, a variable is just a name that you associate with a certain value or object, and then you can work with that value or object by using that name. Variables are a convenient way of storing values with names that are meaningful. So in Python, you assign variables using the equal sign. So in this code cell here, we're assigning the variable x, the value 10. We're going to assign y, the value of Python is fun. Since this is quoted, this is a string value here. And we're going to assign z, the result of this logical operation. So we're going to print the results here. We should see 10, Python is fun, and true. And that is what we get. Now note that assigning a variable doesn't actually produce any output. In order to see this output here, we had to use this print statement on each of the variables we assigned. That's why we saw this. But now when assigning a variable, it's good practice to put a space between the equal sign and the variable name and the value, just for clarity's sake. You can see in this code cell we have p equals 8. Well, that does work to assign the value 8 to the variable p, but this doesn't look very nice. It's kind of jumbled looking. If you do it like this with spaces on either side, it's just easier to tell what you're doing. You'll also notice here, first we set p equal to the value 8, and then below we set p equal to the value 10. When we printed them, the value of p at first in this first print statement was 8, but then we reassigned it by using another variable assignment here to 10. So after you assign a variable initially, you can reassign it by using the equal sign again later. Now once you've assigned values to variables, you can then use those variables as stand-ins for the values. So since we've already assigned values to some different variables here, we can actually use those to perform a calculation. So if we perform this addition, it will actually work using the values we assigned. It is also possible to assign multiple different variables at the same time in one string of assignments. Here we're saying n assign m assign 4. This is actually going to assign both n and m the value 4. This is a bit of an odd construction, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend you do this, but know that it is possible to do that. You can also assign multiple variables at the same time using a comma separated list of values within parentheses. So here we're assigning three variables, x, y, and z, separated with commas, and we're saying equals 10, 20, and 30. So what this is doing is extracting each value from the within the parentheses here and assigning it to the variable in the proper order that came before the equal signs. Now this sort of assignment is actually what's known as tuple unpacking. A list of numbers within parentheses in Python is actually known as a, as a tuple. It's a certain type of data structure that we'll go more into later. But this is actually a very common construction to see in Python, having a tuple of values and extracting them into variables like this. Another trick you can do with tuple unpacking is swapping values of variables. So this is going to take the value of y and put it into x, and then take the value of x and put it into y. So let's check above what those were. x was 10 and y was 20. So after running this, x will now be 20 and y will be 10. Let's run that and see that it is the case. Now, when you assign a variable in Python, what you're actually doing is making a reference to a specific object in the computer's memory. And reassigning a variable actually just switches that reference to a different object in memory. So if the object that a variable is referring to in memory is altered in some way, the value of the corresponding variable is also going to be altered. Now, all of the basic data types we studied in the last lesson are what's known as immutable, which means they can't be changed after they're created. If you perform some operation that seems to change or alter an immutable object, what's actually happening is a new object is being created in memory rather than actually changing the original immutable object. So let's give an example of changing an immutable object here. First, we're going to assign x the value of the string hello. Then we're going to assign y equals x. That means y is now also equal to this hello. 
But finally, we're going to say y equals y dot lower. This dot lower function, what it does is it takes a string and makes the whole thing lowercase. So it's basically just taking this first capital H and turning it lowercase. But after running this y dot lower and we get the new hello with a lowercase h, this is actually assigning y uh, a new object because strings are immutable. It has to assign a new object instead of actually altering this original one with the capital letter. So after running these three lines, when we print these to the screen, x and y are going to be referring to two different objects now. X is referring to the original hello with the capital H here. And Y is now referring to a new string where the H has been turned lowercase. So let's just print that to confirm that that is true. Now, in contrast, if we were to do a similar thing, but use an object that was mutable, which means it can be changed in memory instead of making a new object, then X and Y would still refer to the same thing. So I'll give an example of that below with a list. So here, we're going to assign x a new list. A list is just a sequence object in Python. We're actually going to cover that in the next lesson. But basically, we're assigning x this list that's just three numbers, one, two, three. Again, we're going to assign y equals x. So now y also is pointing to this list. And now we're going to say y.append4. That means we're adding 4 onto the end of the list y. Note that we're only adding the number 4 to the end of the y variable list, but y and x have both been assigned to this same list in memory, and since lists are mutable objects, meaning they can be changed in memory and don't require making a new object every time you want to change one, then after adding 4 to the end of the y list, it's still going to be pointing to the same object in memory, and x is still pointing to, to that object as well. So after running this and we print x and y, these are actually going to be the same thing still. And this x list is going to have this number 4 added to it, even though we didn't also have to do x.append4. So, so you can see both the x list and the y list are pointing to the same object still. So even though we appended 4 to the variable y, it also effectively appended it to x as well because they're both pointing to the same thing. So that's something to be wary about when using Python is that when you're dealing with mutable objects, sometimes you can be changing something in memory and then other variables you assign might also be changing in ways that are unexpected. So it's just important to keep that in mind. Now variables are basic coding constructs that are used across all programming languages. And when you're dealing with data, you'll often have data objects assigned to variables and then run functions on those data objects as a part of data analysis. But those are things we'll get to in some future lessons. In this lesson, we briefly introduced the concept of tuples and lists, which are sequential data objects that can hold several values. In the next lesson, we're going to dig more into these sorts of compound data types by having a full lesson on Python lists. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.